Hello, I'm Patricia Marinci, and this is The Struggle is Really Diverse. This is our ongoing series in which we explore mental health topics, particularly regarding diverse and marginalized groups. If you are a member of those groups and would like to submit a question, suggestion, or topic that may be featured in one of our future episodes, feel free to access the link to the survey in our description box below. You can also get access to that survey by following us on Instagram at U of A Caps. All right, let's get started. On today's episode, we're going to be exploring more the sexual orientation, asexuality. Now, in a previous video, we talked a little bit about what it is about, and we talked about some mental health statistics. In this video, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper and talking more about what asexuality is and isn't, dispelling the common myths and stereotypes of asexuality. And we're doing this with an important point in mind. Because of these damaging myths and stereotypes, a lot of people are harming the community by not legitimizing it as a real sexual orientation. Asexuality is a valid sexual orientation, just like other orientations that we've talked about in previous videos. So I'm going to be jumping in and talking about the most common types of stereotypes and myths and busting them while expanding people's understanding. And the hope is that by talking about these and having these conversations, which are unfortunately not happening enough in mainstream media, we can hope to provide a more open and inclusive environment for those folks who are in the ace spectrum. Now, before I get started, I want to define asexuality. There are a couple of terms that I've been throwing around that refers to different aspects of it. So there's asexuality itself, the sexual orientation or sexual identity. Folks can identify as asexual. You often hear the term ace, which is short for asexual, or aspect, which is short for asexual spectrum. Now, there are many different identities within the asexual spectrum which include gray sexuality and demisexuality. So gray sexuality can be defined in many different ways, just like demisexuality can be defined in different ways. Let's go back to the definition of asexuality. Asexuality is a sexual orientation in which folks experience no, little, or rare, sexual attraction to folks of other gender. And now what's important about this is that it is a spectrum. It doesn't mean that all people who identify within the spectrum of asexuality experience no sexual attraction. In fact, there's a range of the type of sexual attraction that people can experience. Race sexuals are those who may be in between or experience times of sexual attraction, in times where they don't or they rarely experience it. Demisexuality is on the spectrum as a type of asexuality in which someone does experience sexual attraction, but only under specific circumstances, particularly once they have been able to form an emotional bond with somebody. Once that bond is formed, not to say that every type of emotional bond will result into this, but once that bond is formed, then they start to have sexual attraction and feelings. It's important to explain the different definitions that fall within the A spectrum, because a lot of times people don't really understand what it can all entail. And it's not, it's not black and white. Once again, it is a spectrum. And so a lot of people can fall in many different ranges with that spectrum. Another important thing to note is we talked about sexual orientation. One of the most common models that is also discussed under the umbrella of asexuality is the split attraction model. Now the split attraction model acknowledges that sexual orientation and romantic orientation are two separate things. So while folks who identify as asexual may experience 
rare little to no sexual attraction, they can experience romantic attraction. So romantic attraction are the genders in which people form emotional romantic bonds with one another. So while they, while they may not necessarily have any attraction to those individuals, they definitely have a romantic attraction to them. While they may not have a sexual attraction to folks, they may have a romantic attraction to them. And those orientation terms can involve things like biromantic, aromantic, panromantic. Panromantic, meaning someone that is romantically attractive for people of all gender or gender isn't a particular issue for them in regards to who they can love. They can have the possibility of being romantically involved and oriented for anyone regardless of their gender. Biromantic can mean two, but it can also mean that they can be attracted to more than one gender or that gender isn't a factor in which in the folks that they tend to fall in love with. Aromantic are people that do not experience any romantic attraction. So you can see that the prefixes for the romantic spectrum of orientation is very similar to the prefixes in the sexual orientation spectrum. Now that we've clarified some of the terminology in regards to the A spectrum, let's dive in and debunk some of the most common myths. The first one, asexuality is a mental illness. It is not a mental illness. It is a legitimate sexual orientation. But the reason that I'm assuming many people may think that asexuality is an illness is that folks have been socialized to believe that everyone has sexual attraction. And so to have folks out in the world that don't experience sexual attraction for people who don't understand it, they may inaccurately and harmfully assume that there must be something wrong with them, that they must be going through some sort of mental illness. And that is not the case. Even folks who are within the helping professions and follow the DSM may see that there are certain disorders they may, that may look like it's talking about asexuality, but that's not the case. One of the sexual dysfunctions listed in the DSM or the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders is hyposexual desire disorder. So that's folks that struggle to have desire for sex. And while that may seem like it's talking about asexuality, it is not true. Because in this particular situation, the folks that have this disorder are bothered by the fact that they don't have desire. Most often, they are individuals that used to have desire for sex and they no longer have it. And that causes distress. That is very much different from asexuality, who they don't experience the stress about a lack of desire of sex at all. Next one, asexuality is the same as celibacy or abstinence. Once again, that is not true. Asexuality is not a choice. Now I say that because celibacy and being abstinent are choices. And technically anyone from any type of orientation can technically choose to be celibate. Choosing to be celibate is the act of not engaging in sexual activity. And that could be for a variety of different reasons. Most commonly it has to do with religious or moral reasons, but it can be a variety of different reasons. But once again, that is a choice in the behavior that someone makes regardless of their sexual or gender identity. Whereas asexuality is a sexual orientation in itself, where the person doesn't have the desire to be sexually attracted. This leads us to our next myth. Asexual people do not engage in sex or they are anti-sex. That's not the case. While there are asexuals that may be sex repulsed, 
meaning that the idea of having sex to them is not something that's pleasant that they want to engage in that does that mean that they are necessarily anti-sex and anti-sex for everyone else there are a lot of sex positive asexuals that believe in the benefits of one's ability to engage in whatever type of sexual activity that is pleasurable for them they can acknowledge and respect that for other people when it comes to them however it may be a different path that they are interacting with and once again just because you're asexual doesn't mean that you don't engage in sex or you've never ever engaged in sex before sometimes a person finds out that they're asexual through the act of engaging sex or asexual people may engage in sex for a variety of different reasons they may be in a relationship with a partner in which they want to engage in this mutual bonding activity for one another next myth is asexual people do not experience sexual desire what was that i just said yes that is a myth sexual attraction is different from sexual desire or libido in this case So just because asexuals may experience little to no desire or rare desire or specific instances of having desire or attraction to people doesn't mean that they don't experience desire itself or sexual feelings itself. We're all biological human beings and so that part is part of all of us that sexual desire, the sexual feelings. But for asexual people it doesn't result in a attraction towards any particular person so they may have experiences of feeling you know sexual desire libido or horniness but it's not something that orients them to being attracted to a particular person or wanting to engage in sex with a particular person and because of that a lot of asexuals do watch porn or engage in solo sexual activity such as masturbation. This is very interesting for people to understand and to learn more about it who folks who are outside of the community because a lot of times we conflate the idea of sexual desire slash libido and sexual orientation. You can have sexual feelings but they may not be oriented anywhere. And so oftentimes when you hear asexual people or aspect people talking about this sexual desire it's they'll talk about it as a way of something that's kind of if they engage in sexual activity cleaning out the pipes it's not something that they're necessarily going to connect with another being for example it, just like those that are sexually attracted to people next one The reason that someone becomes asexual is because they've had a history of abuse. That is not true. And this is not the only type of identity in which folks believe is a result of abuse. Asexuality is not a result of a terrible life experiences. That is not to say that there aren't asexual people who have been abuse in the past unfortunately sexual or any type of abuse um can happen to anyone regardless of their gender and sexual identity but that horrific act in itself does not result in the development of the asexual identity i think once again the stereotype stems from the idea of people not being able to to conceptualize or to picture people who just don't really have desire for engaging in sex. And so kind of similar to the mental illness thing, they may think that okay, maybe they're are really depressed or something bad has happened to them mentally or something bad happened to them in the past and that's why they ended up that way. And that's not the truth. It's not the truth at all. Once again, asexuality is a legitimate orientation. Our last <laughs> miss slash stereotype is asexual people are only asexual because they haven't found the right person yet that is a very very common one and trust me a lot of asexuals would definitely disagree with that statement 
they're not asexual because they haven't found the right person yet. It's not like they're waiting for somebody or they've given up hope on finding the right person for them. First of all, that that doesn't display the whole picture of things. As I mentioned before, just because someone's asexual doesn't mean that they can't have relationships with people. They can be romantically attracted to someone and have those fulfilling relationships. So finding not finding the right person yet, saying that to who, an asexual person who it happens to be in a relationship with someone, maybe it's not a sexual relationship, takes away the legitimacy of that relationship. I think once again, it's stemming from the idea of people just not acknowledging that romantic relationships can exist without sex or sexual attraction. Also, there have been many instances of individuals who identify as asexual trying to, you know, having sex or engaging in different types of sexual activity and still not feeling any resultant sexual attraction to folks. So I would assume that they are the experts of their own lives and their experiences. And if they're telling you that it has nothing to do with finding the quote unquote right person or not, then we should believe them. Now let's talk about the final, final one. This isn't necessarily a myth or a stereotype, but it has to deal with this a underlying sense of invisibility, invisibility that folks in the ASPEC community experience within the LGBTQ community. And in the ways that happens is in the acronym itself. So we talk about LGBTQ, LGBT, LGBTQ+, and sometimes it has the A in it and sometimes it doesn't. But even when it does have an A in it, a lot of times people will attribute the A to allies only not even acknowledging the fact that A stands for asexual. And so that in itself is an erasure of the asexual identity, even when the A is mentioned into this. To say that it has to do with allies and not asexual gives discredit for folks that are part of the community. So if you are using that acronym and you're using A, make sure that you're being inclusive of asexual folks. Allies are definitely important in the community, but we want to make sure that we say and acknowledge that allies are outside of the community and allowing for folks who are inside a community to be recognized. Now, these myths and stereotypes are myths and stereotypes that people can have regardless of their sexual and gender orientation. A lot of times people within the community itself may have these unfortunate beliefs, myths, and stereotypes, in addition to allies of the, of the community or people who are against members of the LGBTQ community. So it's important, regardless of where you stand on these issues, and hopefully, like myself, you're an ally you're watching this video or a member of the community that's watching this video, that we have a better understanding as to what asexuality is. Now, if you're not part of the ace community, it, there Yes, there is this truth that you may not understand what it means, what it truly means to be an asexual person. But as long as you're able to support and to legitimize the orientation itself, then that is the hallmark and the beginning's launching point of being a supporter and effective ally. So let's continue to have these conversations with one another. And if you're interested, I can give you links to my resources below so you can continue the learning. Because if we're going in this lifelong journey of being able to support one another, it's important that we continue to educate ourselves. So I would love for you to join me in that journey of lifelong learning. If you found this information or video to be helpful, I would love for you to do a couple things. First, please like this video and make sure to hit subscribe to our channel. And when you are hitting subscribe, make sure to hit that bell icon so you can be notified for each new episode of our ongoing series. This has been The Struggle is Really Diverse. Until next time.